Hello everyone, I'm Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. In this episode, we're going to cover what this channel is going to do, a little background and history on Bitcoin mining ASICs, and where we are going from here. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so why did I decide to get into mining and to make this channel? Well, going back into Bitcoin mining history, Around 2012, Bitcoin mining moved from graphics card technology to ASIC-based miners. And if you remember, ASIC stands for Application-Specific Integrated Circuits. These are machines designed and built specifically to mine Bitcoin. Um, here's a simple chart showing the progression of ASIC mining technology, and this shows how the efficiency has improved over the years. Now, in the first few years, 2012 to 2017, mining efficiency improved by almost a factor of 100. Uh, technology was moving very fast, and you had to swap out your hardware to stay competitive and profitable. In this time frame, building anything with permanence really wasn't a good idea because it would be out of date way too quickly. However, looking at this chart, things are starting to change. If we focus on the last few years, we see that the rate of change in mining efficiency has slowed down quite a bit. Now, things are still changing. We're still not at peak efficiency yet. Uh, we're still seeing increases in ASIC technology. However, what you see is hardware development and advances are slowing down. And so miners are staying competitive and profitable much longer than ever before. Now, not only is hardware efficiency starting to stabilize, but hardware itself is becoming standardized. In this next image, I took a number of miners released in the last few years and overlaid their sizes on top of each other. And what you see is that their sizes are becoming more uniform. Um, and this is a large part being driven by industrial miners. Uh, they need consistency in shape and size when they build their infrastructure that holds hundreds, if not thousands of miners. They just can't handle variability. Um, also, miners really can't get too much larger than their current sizes. If they get too much larger, they're just going to be too onerous to move around these mining facilities. And so mining hardware is physically converging on a typical size factor as well. Now, in addition to these trends in efficiency and size, in the recent years, we are also seeing a change in cooling technology. Uh, up until recent history, air cooling has been the dominant method of cooling miners. It's a typical method for cooling all electronics. You take a very large fan, blow a lot of cool air across hot electronics, and things cool down. This has been done forever. It's very reliable. However, over the last couple years, a new cooling technology, immersion cooling, has come into the mainstream of Bitcoin mining. Uh, lots of technology has been figured out, and real mining facilities are now using this at scale. And the reason why is immersion cooling has a number of benefits over air cooling. Uh, number one, increased equipment reliability. In air cooling, you have very big fans pushing all that hot air, and these fans can fail. In addition, these fans are mechanical devices, and so they vibrate, and that vibration is driven into the hardware, which can cause damage and reliability issues over time. Uh, finally, circulating air has dust, and that dust can settle on your electronics, contaminating heat sinks, making them less efficient, and that can cause failures over time as well. And immersion cooling fixes all of this. Instead of a large fan, you just have a pump circulating fluid through your miner. There's no vibration, no dirt, no dust. Another advantage of immersion cooling is low noise. Uh, air cooled miners can generate up to 80 decibels of noise per miner. That's screamingly loud, and it's really not fun to be around. Again, immersion mining fixes this. You just have a quiet pump and flowing fluid, no loud fans. And the final advantage of immersion cooling is overclocking. Um, air is an insulator. It really isn't the best fluid for pulling heat off of heat sinks, but we use it anyway. Um, a cooling fluid is going to be much, much more efficient. So if you take an air-cooled miner and convert it to a liquid-cooled miner, you're going to be able to run it at a much higher speed, getting much more power out of the same device and making yourself more profitable. Hey folks, just a quick reminder to hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm will share all this good content with other people and for you to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any good content coming your way. With that, back to the episode. Okay, so over the years, there have always been folks trying to integrate Bitcoin mining into their house. Uh, they've used it to heat their house, their hot water, other things. And in the past, it really hasn't been that practical. Uh, the technology of mining has been moving too fast. They had to switch things out too often. And honestly, it really is difficult to take a warm air source and integrate that into a conventional home infrastructure. But now things might be changing. As we stated before, miners are lasting much longer. Uh, investing in home infrastructure to incorporate Bitcoin mining might actually be worth the effort. 
In addition, miners are settling on a typical size. So if by chance you do have to swap out your miner, you generally won't need to have to rebuild everything. And finally, immersion cooling is becoming more mainstream. There's a lot more technology and equipment out there for integrating Bitcoin immersion mining. And when you use Bitcoin immersion mining, the output is a hot fluid instead of a hot air, which is much easier to integrate into home heating infrastructure thanks to the hydronics industry. And so maybe now is the time where Bitcoin mining can become a practical part of your home infrastructure, in which case you could easily earn Bitcoin while heating your house. And so this is the goal with creating this channel, to build a real Bitcoin immersion mining setup into a real house. And I'm going to focus on real homeowner issues, uh, issues like noise. I like a quiet house. Most people do. I want a system that don't even notice is even running. Uh, reliability. Um, as much as I like working in my house and working on new projects, I really don't want a system that I have to constantly maintain. I want a system just like my furnace or my water heater or my air conditioning, something that just runs and I don't have to worry about it. And finally, practicality. Um, I want a system that fits with my home infrastructure. I don't have something that I have to duct tape and use bailing wire to get together. I want something that just works. And so with this channel, I intend to show how one person, me, integrates a Bitcoin mining setup into a real home. Now, my goal is to first cover design concepts. I want to show how to design, build, integrate assistive components, what to think about when designing different components, and how to get them to work together. But in addition to design ideas, I also want to show real build details. I'm going to show exactly how I build my system, tips and tricks, techniques I learned along the way, and cover difficult problems I have to solve and how I get through them. Now, to be honest, I'm an engineer by trade, and so I will definitely take opportunities to over-engineer this solution. I will likely spend more time, effort, and money than you will. I'm likely going to do things the hard way and solve problems you might not have to solve. And so when you're watching these videos, realize you'll likely not have to do everything I'm doing. However, if you do have a problem, hopefully I'll have something similar and be able to give you ideas or options to solve your issues and build your system in your house. So with that, where are we going from here? Well, I'll be putting out two types of episodes. First, design episodes. Uh, this is where I'll describe the different components of a home Bitcoin immersion mining system, and I'll cover the design of these components and hopefully give you enough information for you to build your own system. I will also be putting out build episodes. This is where I will show you how I'm putting that information to work in my own home, building my own system. Um, the idea here is to show you the successes and failures along the way so you can see how I'm doing it myself. So wrapping up, that's all I have for this first episode. Uh, we covered some mining history, uh, why I'm making this channel, and where are we going from here. In the next episode, this will be the first design episode where we will cover system sizing, where to locate your miner in your house, and single loop versus dual loop systems. So with that, bye.